Some brands offer you low finance, or cashback, or servicing. Renault don't do ors. We do ands. The Renault Kajar, with 1.91% APR and €1,000 cashback and three years servicing, saving you thousands. Renault, the brand with the ands. Visit your local Renault dealer. Finance is made under a higher purchase agreement. Terms and conditions apply. Deposit required. Subject to lending criteria. See Renault.ie. You're listening to Life Strategies with Monique. Get ready to be empowered and inspired. Hey there, and thanks for tuning in to another episode of Life Strategies with Monique. In this week's episode, we are interviewing Christy July. Christy is an educator, a mom of two, a wife who also has a passion for entrepreneurship. So in this week's episode, she's going to share with you on how you as an individual can balance a career and run a successful business. Stay tuned. Well, hello, 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 everyone, and welcome to another Life Strategies with Monique. I am your host, Monique Petaway, and today we have such a special guest this morning. We have with us Christy July. If you don't know Christy July, you're going to get to know her today. She is an educator by trade. She's a mother of two, and she is also an entrepreneur and business owner of a transportation and logistics company. And today, she's going to share with you how to balance work and being a woman entrepreneur. I am so excited that she has decided to come in today and share her story and share how she as a woman is able to balance the two. And I know there's some of you out there who are struggling with that. So I'm so glad you tuned in. Christy, hey, glad you came in and want to share your story with our listeners today. I know you have some amazing things to share with us. So hey, Christy, how are you? I'm wonderful. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be on your show. Well, great. Well, you know, as I stated to our listeners already, you are an educator by trade. And you have also decided that you're going to be an entrepreneur. So tell our listeners a little bit more about your background and how you actually ended up moving and transitioning into becoming an entrepreneur. Great. Well, I think at heart, I've always been an entrepreneur. Ever since I was a teenager, I remember selling cakes uh, in high school. If you had people that were celebrating birthdays, you know how you always wanted to celebrate your friend's birthday. So you brought them cupcakes or something of that nature. Well, I started um, offering my fellow classmates the option to buy a cake from me. So you ordered your birthday cake from me, and I would be sure it was there for your friend's birthday to celebrate, and that was kind of the kickoff for me. Now, to be honest, I was not a great baker. Um, It was a box cake, and I'm sure it wasn't (laughs) decorated very well either, but people bought from me, and so... I never thought about that as being um, an entrepreneurial task or uh, business or anything like that. I just figured that was a way for me to make some money in high school. And so uh, when I got to college, I kind of let those thoughts and feelings go a little bit and uh, education and learning and being engaged in uh, helping kids and moving people along to reach whatever their goal is, is also a passion of mine. So uh, in college, education became my major. Uh, Entrepreneurship was not a big push at that particular institution, nor was it really on my radar. Like I said, I was just selling the cakes, didn't really know what that meant. Uh So um, went into the field of education and I have loved it. Um, I have a passion for helping people achieve their level of success that they're looking to reach and to grow. And also I'm very uh, strategic and uh, logistics minded. So I try to think of how can we reach this goal, but what are those steps in order to get there? So all of those things have, uh, I think, made me very successful in education, but there's always been that itch that I said, wait a minute, I really want to um, do something for myself Uh as well. Um, I give a lot, I think, to helping 
people in education grow. And so, but there was something else that I wanted to do that entrepreneurial itch kept coming back. I could not shake it. Mm -hmm. And so I finally decided, you know what, now is the time for me to really start to buckle down and see what it is that I want to do and that I can do well and be uh, an asset to our community. Mm, that's amazing. And you know what? One of the key things that I heard you say was that it was an itch, that it kept coming back, that when you were younger, you know, you really didn't pay it attention. One of the key things that I, that I really hear you saying is that we really, really have to listen to our life. And I think that is so important. Yeah. The things that happen to us as young kids, the things that we uh, go through, um, the, the little, just those little things are key because they're pretty much signs to tell us what we're really supposed to be doing in our life. So we really have to listen to our life, especially at that time, because it, with same with you and me, you know, as a kid, you know, I had certain things that I should have been listening to to say, hey, mm-hmm. this is the path you need to be taking in life and not this path. And you don't find that out until what you become an adult, you, you've yeah. done that first career, but that thing keeps coming back. And if it keeps coming back, that's the thing that we are supposed to be doing. And I'm so glad that you decided what to listen to your life because that's what our listeners need to know. They need to listen to their life because there's something deep inside of them that is gnawing at them. And if they just would just listen to that little voice that's telling them, Hey, you need to go ahead and do this thing because God is expecting us to pursue our dreams. You know, he has Mm -hmm. gifted us. He has given us, you know, powerful things inside of us that we're supposed to be using to help others reach their dreams. So that is amazing. So that was just very powerful for me to just hear, hear you say that, that we really need to listen to our life and you began to listen to your, to your life. And so now you have started your own business. Yes. And it is moving. Uh, Tell our listeners what exactly it is that you do in your business, the name of your business, what you do and uh, how your business is really starting to impact uh, the community. Yeah, um, my company is called Rely Delivery Service. Uh, We are a transportation and logistics company. And so what that means for the everyday consumer is that I work with businesses to help them offer customer convenience of same day or scheduled deliveries. We all need things um, at a certain time, and a lot of times it's based on emergencies. Um, as a mom and a working mom and a wife, my schedule can be extremely hectic because I do still hold a full time job at the uh, currently, and so my life is extremely hectic. And there are some times when I just need something now, but I don't have the time to go to the store to get that to get to the next stop in order to get to the next stop, and so it would be very helpful to me if there was an opportunity for me to get what I needed delivered where I needed it by the time I needed it delivered. And so uh, that's where Rely Delivery Service was born. And as I said, the logistics piece of my mind uh, plays a huge part in that. So how can I get things from a business to a customer on time or early in a fashion that would be pleasing, convenient, and beneficial to that customer? How can I help their world, their life be more efficient? How can I help them achieve um, success in their social life, in their business, whatever uh, that delivery is needing to fulfill? And really all of this, and I, I hope your listeners gain that, yes, God has a plan for us, that he wants us to constantly be working towards, and that little voice is telling us what that plan is, but sometimes we do have to take a different road to get there, because I realized that in my work with building my business and bringing on um, companies and customers to meet their needs, the experiences and exposure that I've had in my other lives, whether that be education, whether that be through college or any other uh, job that I've obtained at some point or experience that I've had at some point, I'm utilizing those skills now 
to be successful. So understand that the road may not be as fast or as direct as you want it to be to get there. And I'm constantly learning this um, every day of my life. But that all of those tools that I've gained along the way are helping me to develop and build a strong business now. Mm, and that's current stage of life. Yeah, and that's important. That that's another important key that you've just stated about how our life experiences are preparing us for what's to come. Um, when God is trying to get us to a particular place, and He does, the path that we get there, every experience, everything that we we we've gone through, everything that we've learned. I promise you it's going to be used. And you have just stated that, I mean, just as plain. (laughs) And I hope my listeners caught that because a lot of times we're so busy trying to get to another place. We Mm -hmm. forget about the experiences where we are right now because there are things that we're supposed to be learning, things that we're supposed to be gaining, the skills that God is putting inside of us. He's Mm -hmm. building us right where we are. And that is so crucial, especially when God is trying to get us to a place. God is really saying, I'm going to get you there. But right now, I need you to learn this skill, this experience. Because if you don't get this skill and you don't get this experience, you're not going to be prepared for the next place that I'm trying to take you to. So that is another key that I, I pray my listeners just heard you say, because that was really, really powerful because everything that you went through or, or experienced on your jobs definitely prepared you for mm-hmm. where you are now in your business, because it led you to see that there was a need, a yeah. need to be able to meet the needs of people in the community by saying, Hey, I work, I can't get what I need. Mm-hmm. How can I make this work, you know, for the world? And so you took that and said, hey, I can develop a business that meets this particular need because if I need it, I know there are others out there who also need it. Yes, yes. And really that that is how it all started. Um, I was frustrated one day. I had too many things going on <laughs> and not enough time. Mm-hmm. And I was thinking, who's going to go? And take care of these things for me. And unfortunately, where I live, that just is not an available option right now. Um, And I do know that in some other parts of the country, they do have uh, more availability to same-day deliveries. But where I live, we don't. And so I know that there are tons of families, whether... um, you are a young family, or if you're taking care of your parents, or whatever the case may be, a young professional that just doesn't have the time, there are people that need assistance and support to keep their social life going, to keep their business life going, to meet those needs. And so uh, that's why I started this company, to help people feel like they are still able to be successful in their personal and professional lives and getting things done. Wow. That's amazing. So in this industry of transportation and logistics, if, Mm -hmm. if someone was interested in um, going into this same type of uh, business, Mm -hmm. what has been the biggest, I guess, pain point, I would say in starting a business because Um, obviously your your background is not in business. Um, You're an educator. So there's so many learning curves and so many uh, things that an individual don't necessarily know because they're new. So what has been the biggest pain point when it comes to starting a business for someone out there who also wants to start a business, but they don't know where to start and um, they're struggling? What is something they need to be aware of so that they don't make that mistake? Well, um, I'm going to say that there are two really major pain points um, that you want to start to consider before going into it. The first one, you hit on it. I have a background in education. I am not a transportation and logistics major. However, now I feel like I've earned a degree in transportation and logistics. (laughs) I think the first thing is if you decide to go into an area that is not necessarily um, where you have the most experience, 
you need to become experienced. So you need to be a student of that industry. And so that became intriguing to me. And that's also my education side that thirst for wanting to know and thirst for knowledge. Uh, that's what has made me really push myself to learn the industry. And the second pain point that I would say is, yes, you have the knowledge now and you learn what are the strengths and areas of growth in your industry that are needed. But then when it comes to working with business and industry, because I am a business to business company, uh, not business to consumer currently, hopefully I'll grow there. But right now I'm business to business. Being able to get to the table as a small business um, for some of your larger companies is a challenge. And even sometimes to get to the table for your smaller companies when they may not at the moment understand or see the need, helping them to understand their needs, their company, and their company's desire to grow and how you fit into that picture. So that would be my second thing, really learning and researching who your customer is and having them to understand what their challenges are and how you can be an asset to helping them overcome those challenges. Mm. Wow, that's important. I, I'm, I'm glad you touched on that because if you don't research who your market is, I think that also becomes a challenge with new business owners because they don't seem to know who their market is or who it is they're trying to serve. And so that will obviously set a business back quite a bit if you're trying to start out and you don't do your research. So I think that is something important that you've said about being able to research, know it, know who your market is. And then when you finally get a chance to get to the table, you need to be able to tell them how you're going to serve them and how you're mm -hmm. going to benefit them. Because if you get to the table and you can't do that, then you kind of wasted their time, your time. <laughs> yes, the it's above. not going to be successful for you. Yes. Mm -hmm. And, you know, also being uh, willing and open to understand that the smaller tables that you get to are so important. You know, we all want to make that contract that is six figures, million dollar contract, but there's value in having smaller contracts to start to get your name out there, to build your reputation, uh, to get the feedback that you need, and also the time to learn that you may have to pivot. You know, your initial thought and the direction that you needed to go in may have been suitable at one point, but now that you've done it a little bit and you have worked with these smaller contracts, you realize, wait, I need to change my direction. Mm -hmm. uh, because mm -hmm. actually this is more important than another. I think so being open and aware of the direction that your industry is going in is a part of that research, mm -hmm. you know, being willing to transition as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think that's also an important uh, key note or strategy that you've just said for our listeners out there for them to understand that they do need to be open especially if you started in one direction and all of a sudden it needs to change. But that comes with the growing pains of a right. business. And I know that yeah. every business out there at some point has had some growing pains and they've had this idea, but then soon realized maybe I need to change. But mm -hmm. then we find that those that aren't willing to change, they end up going under, sinking yeah. or closing. So that is important for our, uh, upcoming entrepreneurs or business owners need to know is that everything is not going to be perfect. You know, day one, I know you have, I, your wish plan. It were. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but it takes time to actually develop. I mean, cause we have great ideas, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. We have great ideas, great visions, but when it actually comes down to it and you try to put this plan in place, some people are so headstrong <laughs> on wanting to just, stay the same and never mm -hmm. change, not realizing that they're hurting themselves, yes. that they really need to change. Because I've seen a lot of businesses come and go, especially mm -hmm. in this area where we're located. They have come and they have gone. We don't see them anymore and they don't last. But I believe 
in part is simply because they didn't really, really do the market research to yeah. see if it was something that was truly going to be a need in the area versus them just saying, you know what, I'm just going to open this business and, you know, that's it. You know, I'm just going to yeah. fly with it. You know, they didn't do everything that they really needed to do. So I think our listeners need to know and understand that if you're really going to go into business for yourself, number one, you definitely need to do that research. Number two, as you, you, you said also, that you need to value small beginnings because everything mm-hmm. is not going to be uh, glorious. As they say, overnight, it takes time. It really yes. takes time to build a business. So um, there's a saying, don't despise small beginnings. Hmm. So you have to be willing to uh, accept the small because that small may eventually turn into something large. So uh, being willing and open to do that. Thank you for sharing that. Um, In terms of your business, when you uh, decided to go in this business and you decided to open it up, um, and I I, I want to touch, I want you to touch on this just a little bit because I think a lot of people uh, tend to allow what others say, keep them from moving forward. Uh, what would you say um, to our listeners out there who may have kind of like the naysayers in their mm-hmm. ear by starting a business? Because I know a lot of people have what we call dream stillers. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> have you ever experienced uh, where someone wanted to try to steal your dream? Yes, I have. And I steer clear of those people. When it comes to my business, I believe that everybody is in your life for a certain reason, um, but it's not to be in your life as a whole for everything that your life goes through. So I know that there are some people in my life that don't understand why I would want to open my own business and why I would want to leave the stability of a nine to five you know, where you're off on weekends and your health care is paid for, you know, all of those conveniences and those um, luxuries and those areas of stability that we become attached to. Mm -hmm. And for those people, I love them and I appreciate them, but (laughs) I understand that that is not the person that I need to talk with about my business woes and grows. Mm -hmm. I need to talk to, there's other people in my life that I need to talk to that celebrate or listen and can encourage me through those moments of downtime um, in my business world. But for those that are naysayers, I appreciate them trying to protect me um, or trying to guide me to a more stable position that they feel is most stable. I appreciate that but I steer clear of them in mm-hmm. discussions of business. Right, right, right. I'm glad you and said so, that. And <laughs> so, yeah, I'm not one of those people that just write you off, oh, because you don't yeah. like this yeah. aspect of my life. But <laughs> I know that I can't talk to you about business. But right. I can talk to you about my kids mm-hmm. or my marriage, you know, something like that. But I know that this person over here is in my life for the business piece mm-hmm. to help me grow through that. Right. And I, that's what I really wanted you to touch on, the importance of knowing uh, your circle, understanding yeah. who should be in your circle, especially when it comes to business, you know, connecting yourself with the right people. Um, mm-hmm. And like you say, you love them, but at the same time, you know, they don't see the vision that you have because everybody has a different vision. Everybody has a different yeah. dream and you have to associate yourself with people who support you, who are, you know, gun hold for you. And um, a lot of people have shut down their businesses because they have allowed people to tell them, hey, you, I don't know what you're doing. I don't even know why you're doing that, you know. Yes. And they have literally given up on something mm-hmm. that could have been big. And I wanted my yes. listeners to hear you talk about that because I know we all have experienced where someone – has tried to, you know, kill your dream, steal that dream. And you said, well, maybe, maybe, you know, they make you second guess yourself. And that's Mm -hmm. not the person that I need to be hanging around with 
<laughs> at this point if you're going to try to, you know, steal what God has put inside of me. You know what I mean? Exactly. God placed that inside of me, not you, you know, and if exactly. God gave it to me, then that means I need to be fulfilling that. Yes, and sometimes that means that you have to grow your circle. And in my case, that's that's exactly what I had to do. I have people that were in my initial circle that were there for the support um, of me and creating this business and growing this business, but they are not necessarily business-minded either. Mm -hmm. And so I needed to find people that would be willing to grow with me mm -hmm. and I would be willing to grow with them that had more of a business knowledge and would be willing to support me through those times of growth. Uh, but I did not have that circle already. So that meant that I had to step out of my comfort zone and I'm naturally inherently an introvert. And I know the people I work with say, no, you're not Christy. Oh, but I am. <laughs> I am. I have had to grow to be an introvert that has moments of being an extrovert. Mm -hmm. I, um, I, and I, it is exhausting. It is. It is exhausting for me every day. But in order for me to reap the rewards and the benefit, uh -huh. I had to learn that. And so I've had to create an additional circle mm -hmm. um, that's just for my business that with people that can help me mentally, help me emotionally, um, potentially help me financially, and also just the whole business concept and keeping me focused and to know what direction to go in. I've had to build that network. So understand, and your listeners may go through this as well, realizing that after they assess their current circle, it's not necessarily made of all of the people they need. Mm -hmm. And so they're going to have to go and find those people mm -hmm. um, through networking. <laughs> So. Oh, it's so funny you said that when you said an introvert and I was like oh yeah I totally get that <laughs> yes I am I am tired oh at the end of every day oh, but I, yeah <laughs> I gotta do it I gotta do it yeah I, I look I totally get it because you know I'm an introvert myself yes. <laughs> and I'm like oh I, cr I would cringe <laughs> yes but I would have to push through it so yeah listeners out there Trust me, even if you are an introvert, you still have the abilities inside of you. You just have to push forward. You just have to push through it. You just have mm -hmm. to push through it. So, yeah. um, Christy, um, this whole experience, you know, being an educator um, and stepping out, and deciding that you're going to be that entrepreneur that was so deep inside of you, you know, from childhood. Mm -hmm. How has this entire experience changed you? I think it has given me some wings, to mm -hmm. be honest with you. I, um, like I said, I am an introvert. And at times I was a little shy, but I think it's given me a voice. I think it has, and when I say wings, I realize that I can fly. I, I have a little, um, I have some tools with me now that I didn't have before, but it's amazing for me to look at myself and see how I have grown into this woman um, that I knew was there, but I did not necessarily have the avenues to grow her and to see her. And I think it has provided that opportunity for me, but also provided an opportunity for my daughter to see me in a different light mm -hmm. and my son to see me in a different light. And I think that has been the most rewarding that they get to see their mommy grow into this woman. Mm -hmm. that she is. And I then pass on and instill those skills in my children. Wow. And so I, I think it's just nice to, to really get to see Christy and know that I am still growing. I'm still learning, but that's all a part of the journey and to find value in that. And also to find value in patience. Um, 
I am a very time oriented person, which is also logistics is a good thing for me since I'm very time <laughs> and structure right. oriented. Um, um, so I think one of the greatest things that I have um, learned and experienced through this is that I get to meet Christy and know who I am and the woman that I am becoming. Um, because like I said, that I have been, and I am an introvert, and there were times when I was shy uh, and didn't really put myself out there. But I knew there was more to me than that. I had pockets of times when um, I was a little bit more assertive or was more of an extrovert. And I think by traveling this uh, road and going through this journey, I am learning more about myself and the woman that I am becoming. And what I love is that my kids get to see it. As a young girl and a young boy, they get to see their mommy transform and transition into this woman. And I also get the chance to instill those skills in them that I may not have had instilled in me at a younger age. So it is allowing my family to grow as well. Um, but it is a challenge for us too, because we are um, a very young family. And so starting a business does require me to take time away. But learning the need for patience has been uh, occur for me as well, because I am a very time oriented person. I want things in this amount of time, in this way, in this structure, which is why logistics is great for me, uh, because that's what it's all about. But really learning that there is value in patience and waiting and trying to uh, figure out all of these different balls that I have in the air at any given time. But uh, this experience, I would not have treated it for the world, even though there are struggles and there are challenges, me knowing that those will exist and being willing and able and open to facing those, I think has been invaluable for me as a woman. Wow. And you know what, one of the things that you said when you, when you, when I asked you that question, you said it has given me a voice. And that yeah. in itself is so powerful because so many women are looking for their voice. They're looking mm -hmm. for their giftings. They're looking for what it is that on earth that God has put him, put you here for. They're looking for their voice. And the one thing about knowing your voice, God has placed it inside of you. So when you are actually flowing, and things mm -hmm. are moving in the direction in which they should, you finally begin to realize, this is what I'm here to do. This is my purpose. This is what God has gifted me to do. So when you say it has given me a voice, that means you have really, really honed in on purpose. You know what I mean? You've honed yeah. in on that purpose. And so many women, they're it. in these dead-end jobs. They're still mm -hmm. trying to figure out, what is it I'm supposed to be doing? What is my mm -hmm. purpose in life? But listening to that inner child, mm -hmm. that inner entrepreneur, and then you finally move into that, yes. you finally have your voice. That is so powerful. Yes, and, you know? and it really does start in those quiet moments. Um, I've had the experience of feeling like I am in a dead-end job or that I have reached the end of that journey. Not that the job is necessarily dead end, but that I've done all that I can do uh, for that particular position. And so it's time for me to transition into that next phase. But you have to have, at least for me, those quiet moments to really assess and think about and hear the voice hear God talking to you um, to know what direction to go in and when to move mm -hmm. and how to move. Um, that has been the most impactful for me because I'm always going, but learning that, especially in those tough times when I'm like, there has got to be more, this is not for me. Knowing, wait a minute, just sit down and assess what is not for you. Mm -hmm. Why is this the time for you to grow into something else? Mm -hmm. You know, so that that has been most impactful and really been an encourager and a motivation for me to move because I don't feel rushed. I don't feel um, 
as much anxiety, I feel like I am walking on the path that I'm supposed to be taking because mm-hmm. of those quiet moments. Mm-hmm. And all that. So I'm so glad you said that as well. You say listen to the quiet moments and that in itself also is powerful because we do have to take the time to listen, listen. And we're so busy. We're so inundated with, you know, the cares of the world. And yes, we have families. Yes, we have a job. But yes, we do need to take time to sit and listen because God is speaking every single day day and he wants to speak to his daughters he wants to speak to his sons but if you never take the time to to sit down so God can actually give you a plan and I and you know what he will give you one if you just sit down long enough yes to hear him say hey daughter this is what I need you to do hey son you know this is what I need to do so listening that is such a key strategy that I listen need to know when it comes to work balance and being an entrepreneur in this world um so christy um you are with rely Mm -hmm. delivery service um tell our listeners how they can get in touch with you because you have given a real real foundation on what it means to have balance and work and being an entrepreneur if if they wanted to get in touch with you if they wanted to learn a little bit more about your business and um if they had questions for you how can my listeners get in touch with you yeah they can visit my website to learn a little bit more about my business it is rely r-e-l-y d-s dot com uh that's our business website but if you just want to learn a little bit more about me and as a woman, as an entrepreneur, as a mother, as a wife, all of those different things, uh, you're welcome to email me. Uh, I told you I have a lot of balls in the air. Yeah, I know, um, right? <laughs> they are welcome to email me at Christy July, K R I S T I J U L Y, at yahoo.com. And I'll be happy to share with you, and maybe we can both grow on our journeys together. Awesome. Christy, I am so glad that you decided to share with our listeners today. I know that they have gotten a plethora (laughs) of wealth (laughs) of information and knowledge from you today because um, you are such a joy, such a, such a joy and such a gifting to um, the business industry as an entrepreneur, as especially as a woman, um, because you have so much to offer listeners out there. If you don't, like I said, if you didn't know Christy July, you should know her (laughs) by now. (laughs) Please take the time to go to the show notes. Um, All of her information and how to get in touch with her will be there again christy thank you so much for being on the show today such a pleasure such a delight to have you in our presence and i know my listeners have gained so much from you well thank you and you are a joy and an inspiration to me as well if you did not know that i want to be sure i say that (laughs) before i let you go um that I, i just love you and your spirit and your motivation it is motivation Oh, oh, thank you, Chris. Tell you're going to make me cry in the middle of the show. (laughs) (laughs) Hold it together. Hold it together. I know. All right. To my listeners out there, thank you so much for tuning in today. So until next time, stay educated, stay empowered. Hey there, and thanks for tuning in to another episode of Life Strategies with Monique. I truly hope that you enjoyed today's episode with Christy July of Rely Delivery Services. All of her information will be in the show notes, so if you're looking to get in touch with her, please check out there. Also, if you're interested in being on the show, go to my website, MoniquePetaway.com. So until next time, stay educated and empowered. You've been listening to Life Strategies with Monique. 